Hello, my fellow gnomes. Welcome to episode nine. And we've got our shop set up, but now we need to have some monsters, some zombies. So I'm going to paste in where our zombie four is right in the middle of the track. Run away! <laughs> um, that's cringy. But um, we've got this basic R6 zombie and nothing fancy going on here. It's got a head, a humanoid root part, a tars torso and arms and legs. And what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this thing into our server storage and into our assets folder. Let's create a new folder and we'll call this enemy and we can put him into that. And then inside of our train handler, um, probably inside of the track module, we're going to add in a new module script. We'll call this enemy. We're just going to be doing the zombie today, but if you wanted to do more enemy types, you might want to structure this slightly differently, but we'll just go with zombie here. So we'll name the module enemy and we're going to create a function enemy.spawn. Now, this is going to be pretty similar to our environment function when we're spawning in items like we have to search for it and then paste it in. So, in fact, we could just go ahead and like copy all this code from spawn item, put it into enemy.spawn. So we're going to need server storage, create a line for that at the top. And then we're going to want to search through the enemy folder for a enemy with the correct name. And then if we've got it, then we know that our new enemy and we can clone it. And then we don't want to set the C frame. We need to set the pivot. So make sure that your model has a primary part. This one does humanoid root part. If it doesn't, you just click here and then select the humanoid root part. And then our new enemy and we use the pivot to method. And I think we're going to have a C frame value that we're going to give to this function. So we add it at the top there. Then we need to set the parent. It's not going to be the items folder, obviously. Let's create a new folder in the workspace called enemies. So it'll go workspace.enemies. And then finally, another thing we're going to do is we're going to say new enemy dot primary part. And we're going to call a function called set network owner. That will be important later. We're going to set that to nil, which means that the server always retains ownership of all the physical properties of it. And we help it to move a little bit slower. So it's not going to buffer between different players and sort of snap about a bit. Now, later, we'll do a whole bunch of logic for um, chasing the players. But for now, let's just focus on spawning the enemy in. So if we go to our environment module again, and at the top of our script, we've got this building interval. Well, we'll create another global called enemy interval. And maybe let's just set this to 10. And then if we go down here for where we're doing our all our environment stuff, we do our land, we do our buildings, our decoration. Well, after we've done all that, we can do enemies as well. So let's say if the track number divided by whatever the enemy interval is, if that equals the remainder of that equals zero, then let's spawn some in. How many do we want to spawn in? So we need to work out where we're going to position this zombie. So first off, we need to know what direction, what side of the track. So that's either going to be the same side as the building, or if we're not spawning in a building, then let's just take a random one from this directions table again. So directions bracket math dot random two. So one of those two options, one or minus one. And then the offset, so this is kind of offset from the track, will be a C frame dot new. And on the X axis, so this is the left and right of the track, let's just generate a random number somewhere between 20 and 100 studs away from the middle of the track. So they're not going to spawn directly on top of it. And then we'll multiply that by the direction. So either one or minus one to be on the left or right of the track. And then for the Y value, I'm actually going to just do um, 50. So they're going to spawn slightly in the air. You're going to see them spawning in, which is going to be a bit silly. But it does mean but that's just how we're going to do things for now. And then for the Z value, uh, let's just make this minus 50 and 50, which is the same we did for our decoration as well. So then the actual C frame that we're going to spawn the zombie in at is using the track piece dot primary part dot C frame and we just multiply it by the offset. So then whenever we want to spawn in our zombie enemy, oh, we haven't actually referenced our module script yet. So up at the top where um, we can define it like so enemy equals require script dot parent dot 
enemy. So then now down here, we can say enemy.spawn, provide the name zombie, along with that C frame value. So now if I hit play, I have my output open. So I'm checking for any errors. And we're num currently at track number one, but, and we can see track number five over there at the, uh, the station. And if we keep going to number 10, Oh, there we go. We've just seen the zombie spawn into the air. So we've got our single zombie there. And we can go up to this guy and, well, not really a lot's going to happen. But we've got our first zombie spawning in. I think what we'll do first is we'll um, spawn in multiple zombies. So that's pretty easy. Uh, inside of here, let's define a quantity, right? So let's say the quantity is a random number and we'll make this sometimes if you don't want to say generate zombies on every single interval, a little like trick you can do is you can start your random at say minus five, the number between minus five and 20 with 20 being the most amount of zombies that we want. And then if it's less than one, well, we're not going to have any at all. So then we'll leap through or I quantity. So if, if quantity is less than one, then this loop is not going to even run. Um, but otherwise we can spawn in and oh, sorry for I equals one quantity do, and we'll spawn in a new zombie. And because we've got our offset C frame set every time within the loop, we'll get a different position for each zombie. So if we lower our interval down just to uh, three and now we play, we should see, yeah, we've got a bunch of zombies spawned in. So over on the left hand side, we've got I don't know, a dozen zombies or so. And then if we go further up to the next interval, we see another bunch of zombies spawn in and they'll just keep spawning in nicely offset from the track. There we go, another over to the right. Obviously you have got to think about performance a little bit. So um, you're probably not gonna be able to have like hundreds and hundreds of humanoids, but for a couple, um, you should be perfectly fine like this. There we go, we got one appeared on the roof, pretty cool. So now we've got our enemies, let's actually give them some behavior. So I'm going to have two new functions, one to find the target and another function, which is just kind of our general update function that will keep updating uh, inside of here, inside of a while true loop. Well, actually I say while true, it's while, while we're still inside of the world. So while we have a, a root part, you know, if we've been fallen off the base plate and been deleted, we don't care. And we have a humanoid. So our new enemy dot humanoid dot health. While that is greater than zero, then we're going to call this update function and we'll need to supply our new enemy to it. So we'll make sure we have the parameter set up here and here. Now, if we're running this while loop, then that's actually going to hold up in our environment script, right? So when we're spawning in like 20 zombies, we're going to be stuck on that first zombie because we're going to be trapped inside that loop. So what we can do is we can do task.spawn in a new function and task.spawn is kind of like creating a new thread so it can run in the background so we can just run the spawn function and do the next spawn without getting stuck here. Now you've always got to be careful with a, a while loop like this. Make sure you have a short wait. So we'll wait half a second between every check. And what we're going to do is basically look for players that are in the game and see who is the closest. So let's get the player service. And then inside of our find target function, we can say players equals players get players. That gets us everybody that's in the game. And we're going to loop through everyone. So for I player in players do, and we're going to figure out who is closest. So there's kind of two parameters we want to use here. So let's actually make these globals, which is going to be our search distance, because you may not want to search, say, more than like 100 studs. So we'll set this to 100. And then also we're going to want an attack distance, which is the point at which the zombie can actually damage the player. We're going to make this four studs. So if you get within that radius, you're going to start taking damage. So back to our find target function, we need to create a variable at the top for the target distance. Initially, that's going to be our total search distance. And then we're going to narrow that radius down as we find new players. And our target, initially, that's going to be nil, but hopefully it's going to be one of these players. Now we want to compare the distance of all these players. So we're going to need to get their character. 
And if they don't have a character yet, if they're still loading into the game, then we're going to ignore them. And we also need to make sure that they have a humanoid and a root part. Now again, if the character's still loading in, so they don't have a root, or they don't have a humanoid, or if that humanoid.health is less than or equal to zero, right? So they're dead. Then again, we don't care. So we'll ignore that player. We don't want to keep attacking somebody who's already been killed. We want to go on to the next player. So now we can calculate the distance between us and them. So that's just their root dot position minus, sorry, our minus our enemy dot primary part. So our root, the position of that. And then we get the dot magnitude between these vectors, right? So the, the length of it, how far away they are. And if that distance is less than the target distance, which initially it's our whole search radius, then we're going to update the target distance to be equal to this new distance. So when we're going to the next player, we've got to say, well, are they closer to us than the previous player was? And their target is currently that character that we found. So that's our find target function. All that's left to do at the end is we're going to return back the target along with the target distance. We can return two values, just separating them by a comma. And then we can capture both of those again. So inside of our update function, like we'll target and target distance will be equal to find target, supply the our enemy, our zombie model. And then if we have a target, then we want to see how far away it is. So if that target distance, if it's less than the attack distance we set earlier, then we're going to want to attack them. Target dot humanoid. Use the take damage method, and this could be whatever you like, but probably set it low because we're going to get multiple hits every half a second. They will deal five damage. And if we're not within attack distance, but they are our closest target, then we want to move towards them, hopefully, so that we can then come within the range. So we'll call the enemy dot humanoid move to method, and we'll move to the targets primary part position. And that's our update logic, which will run every 0.5 seconds within this spawned loop. So now if we hit play, we've got a bunch of zombies. They're not doing anything in the distance, but as we get closer towards them, we should hopefully see one starts to, there we go. He's going to turn and approach us and we get closer to these as well. Uh Oh, they're all chasing us. Run away, run away. No, no, no. And if we let them get us, we're going to take a lot of hits and we're going to die. And the zombies just kind of don't know what to do then. And if I then just, uh, move back, they should attack me as if I'm kind of a new player that's come along. There we go. So that is our working uh, zombies. We've made it fairly modular so you could add in um, different types of enemies if you want. But we've done our logic for our zombies, but you could spawn in some different types and oh no we've got a zombie that sat on the train with us uh -oh, on our spare seat they don't call it dead rails for nothing but that's today's video so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video goodbye